Our client's home is a 200-year-old renovated farmhouse. They wanted a dining area just off their kitchen with built-in seating along two walls and a table custom built to size. So we began with 100-year-old reclaimed planks of oak. All the old embedded nails were removed and the faces of the boards were planed. We squared the board's edges so when joined, they would create the tabletop and the bench seat. There are a number of ways to join boards on edge to create a continuous surface. We used biscuits. Biscuits are thin wafers of compressed beech wood that sit inside of slots cut from corresponding edges of the boards to be joined. Glue is placed within the slots along with the biscuit. The boards are clamped together and left overnight to set up. We left the outside edges in their rough form to keep as much naturally worn patina as possible. We decided to cap each end of the tabletop with what are known as breadboard ends. We chose two nicely aged pieces and cut shoulders top and bottom to leave a tongue in the center. Then a groove was routed along the table's end grain to match the tongue's height and thickness, and the cap is fit into place. The ends of the tabletop have a naturally worn edge now, and the surface is kept flat. We attach the end caps by pegging them in place. A number of holes are drilled for the pegs to go through the tongue. The breadboard end is then removed from the tabletop. On a drill press, we elongate the outermost holes to allow the pegs to slide during seasonal fluctuations in the tabletop's width. The pegs are tapered and driven home flush. At this point, the entire tabletop can be sanded. We remove just enough material to make it smooth at a touch and yet retain as much of the aged surface patina as possible. We decided to build a trestle table. We prepared lengths of 5 by 5 inch oak for the legs. Corner braces were created and assembly was accomplished with biscuits once again. A stretcher was created whose purpose is to stabilize the legs to one another. A mortise is cut through each of the two legs just large enough to allow a snug fit of the tenons at each end of the stretcher. All of the table's parts were sanded and a medium stain was applied. Wood dust was collected and mixed with stain to fill a number of the nail holes and splits in this old reclaimed wood. Small undulations in the surface were acceptable, but sharp crevices were not, as food could become lodged there. Then we assembled the table. Each of the two legs are bolted to the bottom of the table with wing nuts, and the stretcher is pegged through both ends to create a sturdy structural joint. Two coats of urethane were applied, and a very dull matte finish was achieved with steel wool and an alkaline agent. Renderings were made for a client before we began. Here is the trestle table as seen from the side, and here is the table as seen from its end, showing the adjacent bench seat. Now the surface of the bench seat was made the very same way as the tabletop, and at the same time. So the seat's legs and back were to be made next. The front edges of the legs were curved backwards to allow easy access behind the table. Because the two outside legs were most readily seen, we chose to panel them. They consisted of a hardwood frame glued to a plywood backing to create the panels. We glued an eighth of an inch strip of wood to cover the front curved edge where the laminated surfaces met. Molding was mitered and glued to the inside corners and tacked in place. The panel backs were fabricated in the same manner. Hardwood was glued to a plywood backing to create these long rectangular panels. And again, molding was cut to length, glued and tacked into position. The legs and back were to be painted so various wood types were allowed. Now we're ready for installation. At the client's home, the back panel was attached to the seat before placing it upon the legs positioned on the floor. Once everything was secured to the walls and floor, a custom molding was wrapped along the top edge and sides of the back against the wall and wrapped at the bottom of the legs to finish the look. Once the back and legs were painted, the dining area was complete. Our clients were very happy.